How were atoms discovered? In Shedding Light on Atoms Episode 3, The Discovery of Atoms, we continue to chronicle the experiments of the 1700s and early 1800s which led to their discovery. At the same time, we cover a lot of modern chemistry as well. We demonstrate how elements can join together to form compounds and how compounds can be broken back down into the individual elements that make them up. We take a look at the first fairly accurate list of elements ever published and examine the law of conservation of mass. We explain how air pressure experiments led to a strong belief in atoms and then show students the evidence that finally revealed that they exist. Here's a quick excerpt. This is copper metal which we use to make electrical wiring and water and gas pipes. If I take a small amount of copper and heat it really strongly, it slowly turns black. The copper chemically combines with the oxygen in the air to produce the black substance which we now call copper oxide, CuO. Copper metal on the left, copper oxide on the right. The equation for the chemical reaction is copper plus oxygen produces copper oxide. Cu plus O2 produces CuO. Let's balance the equation. We have one Cu atom on the left and one Cu atom on the right, so our Cu's are balanced. However, since we have two O atoms on the left, we in fact form two CuO's so we need to put a 2 in front of the CuO. Now we have two Cu atoms on the right, so we need to go back and put a 2 in front of our Cu on the left. The equation is now balanced. So, is our shiny reddy brown copper metal gone forever? Is there any way of getting our copper back? Of somehow pulling the oxygen and the copper apart again? Well, of course there is. With copper, it's actually pretty easy. With lots of other metals, it's really hard. If I take some carbon powder and mix it with some powdered copper oxide, basically the same stuff I just produced, but crushed into a powder, and then heat the mixture, a different chemical reaction occurs and the reddy brown copper metal starts to reform in the test tube. The copper oxide powder, which was made of copper and oxygen atoms which had chemically joined together, is being broken back down into copper metal and oxygen. The oxygen quickly combines with the carbon and forms carbon monoxide, an invisible gas that flows out of the test tube. The equation can be written as copper oxide plus carbon produces copper plus carbon monoxide. So, while copper oxide can be broken down, no experiments ever performed by any of the scientists in the 1700s showed that copper and carbon can be broken down. They were therefore pretty certain that copper and carbon were elements, and we now know they were right. Now let me quickly just mention that the reaction you've just seen is basically how many metals are actually produced in industry, but on a huge scale. Iron, for example, isn't found naturally as iron metal because the Earth's iron atoms are usually chemically joined to oxygen atoms in a reddish mineral called iron oxide. Iron oxide is obtained from iron ore mines. Iron ore is the name given to the rocks from which iron can be extracted at a profit by mining companies. After the iron oxide is mined and purified, it's fed into huge blast furnaces along with carbon, which they get from coal mines. They also pump in oxygen. A series of chemical reactions takes place, similar to the copper producing reaction I showed you, which separates the iron atoms from the oxygen atoms, resulting in the production of iron, liquid iron in fact, since blast furnaces operate at temperatures of more than 1600 degrees Celsius. The iron is then used to make steel, the most commonly used metal in the world.